four games in. Just overall thoughts on, on the run game. I know Jonathan was talking about not being where you guys wanted to be overall, but just your thoughts. Yeah, I would agree. I think, um, you know, when I think about my room with k and Nate taking most of the snaps, I think there's opportunities out there where um, we can do a better job when it comes to uh, just trusting our reads. I talk about our aiming points in the run game. I talk about our reads when we're either reading the defensive tackle, or reading the defensive end, we're seeing safety rotation, and just being a little bit more reactive and natural as opposed to pacing and waiting for these perfect blocks. I mean, um, at this point, you know, Anybody can run through wide open holes, but we got to be able to take advantage of the small spaces, the creases, and take advantage where we can hit those things and puncture the line of scrimmage and fall forward. Any Because it seems like there's been a lot of penetration. Even for some reason, it's Nate. It seems like every time he just is getting the ball and has a guy or two. Yeah, I, I guess when you say is there a common thread or a theme, I guess the common thread or theme is there's people in the backfield um, at times. And, you know, I think that's just, uh, you know, part of the growing pains of trying to move faster and having, you know, guys that were moving around, I think, up front sometimes at the O-line. But at the end of the day, it's still going to come down to when we do get a chance to hit hit the line of scrimmage and we do have free access to the line of scrimmage that we're disciplined in our job. Um, you know, I... I'm probably less worried about, um, you know, the O-line if there's a guy in the backfield or if, when the guy's in the backfield. I'm more concerned about when we have our opportunities, are we taking advantage of it? And that's what really what I've been focused on with my guys. You can't worry about that. But what you do need to worry about is when we're not taking advantage of the space. What do you want a back to do when he takes the handoff, looks up, and he can shake hands with a defender? Well, as, as always, you want to try to make that guy miss if you can. Um, but, you know, as we all know, watching the games, sometimes it's hard to do that. When the guy has you bear hugged up as soon as you get the ball, I mean, you've got to protect the football and get ready for the next play. But when you say, what do you want a guy to do? I want him to get focused on the next play because at that point, once the whistle's blown, we're on to the next play. That play is over with. So just being able to um, flush that play and then get my mind right to go through my process for the next run whenever it's called in. Would you say the key was that one was on your kickoff? It looks like he was, you know, took it a little hard, but you know, come back in the fourth quarter and he was, you know, obviously moving the ball on the ground for you guys late. Yeah, I mean, I will say this: um, running backs sometimes it's it's interesting. It, it, I, I don't want a sense of panic when a guy drops the ball because if a guy fumbles the ball, that's all they're thinking about. And I think it does, it's not you go up to them and you say, hold on to the ball. Well, they know that part of it. The thing that you want to emphasize is, hey, think about your ball security. Were you in the contact zone? Did you have the ball chin? Was it double? And really going through that process that we started way back in the spring for him this summer and getting back on track to get his mind right. The one thing I always talk to these guys about just on, in football in general it's not about the last play. It's not about the next play. The only play that matters is the play that you're in on right now. And that's what I wanted to talk to him about on the sidelines. Like, are you good? Because if you're not good, you're not going back in. And I think that was kind of that snap and clear for him. Now, everybody in the country that knows you're going to hold on to the football. You know what I'm saying? And so was that a, a, a great a great thing? No. But we do want to keep this kid encouraged and keep him confident. And we need him encouraged and confident right when we had to go back on offense. And that was what the most important thing was. When you watch back that fourth quarter, what maybe changed? What looked different when you saw the film uh, maybe from the first three? Like I said, I mean, K Ron was starting to get more of the runs that you wanted. You know, not necessarily 30 40, but eight, 10 kind of yards grinding. Was it blocking? Was it. I, I think it was a mix of everything. You know, I think, um, you know, the thing that. When you ask me when you go back and watch the fourth quarter, I think overall it's just consistent play over the course of a game, over the course of a drive, over the course of a quarter. And that's where, you know, my group, I talked to them about, it's about being consistent runners. It's being consistent in the protection game. We got to be able to be consistent in the pass game and being able to catch the ball out the backfield. Um, so when you talk about going back to watch it, I think the lack of consistency is what hurt us in the second half, not necessarily the fourth quarter. The second half hurt us. Has that been a surprise? I mean, the, maybe the, not as much of, you know, the 
running backs being involved in the passing game or, you know, catching as many passes? I think, you, you know, K-Ron and Nate only have six catches so far this season. Is that, you know, given what the offense is, I mean, are you kind of surprised in some ways that, that, that that's been the case? I wouldn't say necessarily surprised. I just think we've had stuff called or in the game plan um, for those guys and we haven't gotten to it or haven't needed to get to it. Um, you know, you think about uh, the Maryland game, uh, you know, Marsh and some of those guys were having a big, having a big game, Prairie View, um, that game was that game. And then, you know, we had a couple opportunities, uh, you know, K-Ron caught the web, um, you know, we had one in the end zone that we should have caught, you know, it's just, it just has not been, uh, it's not, I shouldn't say available, it just hasn't been called. Uh, our number hasn't been called in the past game like, like you want to at times, but it's not for any reason just we haven't got to those plays. So based on your experience, what could what what uh, dimension could that I mean offer the offense, I guess, like the expanded dimension of having, you know, guys really involved in the in the passing game from a running back standpoint? Great question. I just think um, overall if there is opportunities for us to catch the ball out the backfield, and we catch the ball out the backfield. At times, that could be back, back breaking um, for defenses because it kind of cuts down if it's long yardage. It gives you opportunity for guys dropping off in zone. If we get the ball to the back, he has opportunities to go and run for the first down. Uh, so I just think it's another element to the offense outside of us just running and blocking that is sometimes uh, forget forgotten about, and it can add a little bit of juice to the offense as well. You talked about your running back's mindset. How much is coaching technique? How much is it coaching their motivation? Is that game by game? Is that day by day? It's a great question. Thank you. Uh, I think the motivation piece is de every day. Um, I think it's the understanding that, you know, we got boo-boos, we got, you know, nicks and bruises, but at the end of the day, it's fourth and one, and are you going to get the first down? You know, I used the analogy about a week ago, like there's some guys, you know, with the game on Saturday, if they say there's no trainers available and you, we got to go out there and play, there's some guys that are going to say, hey, I, well, I need to get taped and all this other stuff. Some guys are just going to grab the helmet and go. And you got to figure out what your mindset is going to be. You know, and that's the thing that I'm constantly trying to talk to these guys about. Now, I love the trainers. I know we need them. I get all that. But my point is, sometimes it's not about the blocking. Sometimes it's like, okay, there's a guy in the backfield. I'm going to make that guy miss, and i got to go get this first down for Spartan Nation. And that's the mindset I'm trying to incorporate in the room, not just with Nate and Kron, but in the room moving forward because I think about that mentality. It's easy for anybody to run through a wide-open A-gap hole. Anybody can do that. But at the end of the day, we have guys on edges. we got to be able to break, break the corner tackle when he's blitzing off the edge. we got to be able to set the back linebacker up and slide off half, half a man and fall forward for three yards. That's playing running back. What'd you see in the fourth and one? Let me get her. Inconsistency has kind of been the theme of this team early on, but just with you know having more than half of the roster and turned over and and all the new coaching staff and stuff, how much of that is kind of to be expected? And how do you fix some of those consistency issues when uh, you guys are still working on just you know the O-line chemistry and all that? Yeah, I think you know consistency is an interesting thing. Uh, for me, in my opinion, I can talk about my room. Uh, it's really pointing out, um, you know, what, where we have get gained ground, where we have gotten better, and then going back to the process of what it took to get there. Like I think about in the, in the run game, you know, the process that it takes is, okay, what are we doing in the pre-snap? You know, we break down the pre-snap cycle with our assignment, our alignment, right? And then if it's the run game, what is our run keys? What's our aiming point in the pass game? What's the protection? What's our rush threats? And just being able to go through that cycle over and over and over. I think being able to go through that discipline day after day after day is what produces consistency. And that's what, I, what I'm talking about even when he asked about the fumble. Okay, what is the process of how we hold the ball? You know what I mean? If we hold the ball high and tight. If we get in trouble, we double. And just continuing to um, beat that dead horse for the lack of a better term, just to make sure these guys understand consistency is not luck. Consistency is doing the same grinding discipline things over and over, and then the results come after that. What did you see on the fourth and one conversion with K-1? He spun out of some contact earlier. What, what did you see in that whole thing? That's what I'm talking about. I mean, it wasn't that was not clean. I mean, the O line washed it down. We got an unblocked corner, which we're running a uh, duo type play, and that's the guy he has to run on. There's nobody blocking him, but at the end of the day, we know we got to get the first down. 
and he bounces off. He gets his spin moves, which we, he, he's worked on, you know, obviously before he got to me, and that's something we work on in our individual, and then being able to run through an arm tackle. I mean, that's what it's about. At the end of the day, it's about getting that fourth and one, and that's the guy we trusted in there to get that done. And I think between him and Nate, they have that mind mentality that when it's time for me to get this done, I will have to get it done.